But in our case, where we just have this API, like open food facts, and, and it's just there, and this kind of the usual case of, of the way it is that there's just an API and you would want to find some way to connect it, then we have this thing called REST API direct integration. And this will pretty much work for most APIs that, that return uh, data in the JSON data format, which should be pretty much like almost any kind of API at this point. And the way we start working here is that we add a new data resource you know, that is of the type of the REST API direct integration. And that uh, when I, we click the add, it takes us to this view where we configure the resource. So we have a few things we need to enter for the resource. First of all, we need to enter a resource ID. Um, that should be like a unique name just for the resource. So, but unique within the app. So here we can enter something like food facts. And then we could um, enter a short description about like what the, what the, what what this um, resource is about. So data from food facts API. It uh, displays this description in a few places. So it's sometimes helpful to enter this. And then uh, we have the first hard question of the configuration, which is the resource URL. And I'm just gonna copy the API URL here and then explain how this works. So so this um says here the info box says that this is the base uri of the api resource uh where that it refers to and and the base uri is a kind of um sort of uh, not always clear concept here i would break up this api url so that obviously world.openfacts.org is 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 part of the base url and then also the part where it tells you it's an API and where it tells you it's the version zero of the API. But then I would say that from the product onwards, it's kind of um, not, not part of the base URL because this, this might be changing to something else. So I'll take that out. I'll copy that to the clipboard. So this should be enough for the base configuration. So now we can, now we are ready to sort of like add more stuff after this URL. And I'll just go ahead and save at this point. And now on the left, we have these methods. Um, and these, uh, again, if you're familiar with REST APIs, then you will recognize this as HTTP methods and REST API methods. Uh, what these do, they kind of, they are for sending different types of requests to the API in question. So, so, um, Typically with REST APIs, these are kind of the basic archetypes of requests that you can send. You can send a GET collection request, which uses the GET protocol uh, or the GET method. And you can send a GET record, which is a single record, which also uses the GET method. You can send a CREATE record, which uses the POST method, which is a HTTP method. And then you can send an update and delete record. Now, if we think about in our case, like what, what would be a good representation for what we're trying to do, we are sort of trying to get the data for a single, single food product. So I think in this case, and, and uh, we can tell that it's a GET request. This gets a bit technical and I won't get like too deeply into how HTTP actually works, but Basically, since we're able to see this in the browser, like this is a, the browser makes a get request. The post request is something that's used with, uh, for example, forms, and, and we can also say send post request in some other ways. But when you just visit the URL in the browser, it's a get request. So to replicate this and to be able to do a similar request, we will use the get type method get record since we're getting the data for a single single kind of food item the get collection would make sense if we would be getting like a huge list of things or something like that but for now we'll just use the get record method um, okay and here we have some more configuration 
now it's actually displaying the, the relative path that we put as the resource relative path. And the reason why we put in a relative path is that you don't have to repeat it all over these methods as you're doing them. And here we could now enter the rest of the URL, which is of course product and then the barcode. Now, um, of course we want to make it so that we can control this number that's being sent to the API, uh, depending on which barcode we have scanned. And for that, we actually have a very handy thing here, uh, which is called the URL placeholder. And by default for the get record thing, we have some of these conveniences in the platform. So by default, the get record method has a URL placeholder conferred called ID. Now we'll take this one and we'll just change it a little bit to make the label say barcode and also let's make the key barcode. And this will enable us to just like reason a bit better about like what is happening there. There are some other options like the value type uh, text is fine with us. Um, no, it's not static. We want, to be, we want it to be dynamic. Uh, one thing that we want to change about this is uh, possibly making it not optional since we really do need a barcode every time uh, we send these requests. But with that, we have configured the, the placeholder. And now to use the placeholder, so remember we wanted to replace this barcode here to be able to send our barcode to the server in this case. We'll just take this part, which is the barcode, and then in uh, curly brackets, we can enter the name of a URL placeholder. So now, now the URL placeholder replaces this, this bit with whatever we give it. And we're gonna give it the, the barcode in just a moment. But now I'll, um, uh, I'll actually see if I can, yes, we can go here. So, so this is all the configuration we need. We have the relative path, we're configuring the get record method, and now we have given it the URL and changed it so that we are replacing the, the barcode bit of the URL with this the URL placeholder. So after this, we head into the test tab, and now it actually, it already knows about, since we have the placeholder configured, it knows that there should be a barcode here. And we're just going to bind it for the test tab. We're going to bind it static text. And then we can go back here into the URL, which we have this barcode that I've gotten beforehand. So we see that this request is in fact working and it gives us data. So, so we want the same thing to happen in here. So to test this, we'll put the barcode here. We could also use the one that uh, we got from the tomato can earlier. That would work just as well. Uh, and then uh, now we're ready to sort of run, push the run test button, which will take all the configuration and then it will uh, and, uh, attempt to send a request to the API. And then we see the response on the right. So I'll press that. Yeah. And now we're getting basically the same request done uh, in the in, in Composer Pro as we did in the browser. So now it's putting together the whole request, but we're able to control which, which barcode we're asking from it. And already you can see that now the data is slightly more useful to us since, since Composer knows, unlike web browsers, it knows about JSON and it can, it can show us some more interesting data. Like, uh, yes, this is a barcode for a licorice product that we'll be scanning soon actually and um, and after we have done the test there's one more uh, really important and really helpful step that we can do which uh, we can find here below the test button after we have a successful test and we get some data back uh, we can press the set schema from response so if you don't know what is a schema it basically it refers to the structure and the naming of this data. So this is all schema. It's, uh, it's schema that this data has a, this key called status underscore verbos, and then it has like a value for it. The value is not, not part of the schema, but kind of this general structure of the data. I'll just go ahead and press it and, and you'll be able to see what I mean. 
Yeah. And now we have set the schema from response. So it, it took uh, the structure of the data from the, from, the, and, uh, from the response, from the API. And in the case of Food Facts API, there's quite a few things on the, on the thing that we get back. In fact, the product, product data has 191 properties and we can see all of them here. So, so it has lots of, lots of different information about the scanned food item. And we can be making use of uh, all of these if we want, but we'll pick a few as an example. Uh, and with that, we're actually done with configuring the resource. So, so the important bits here is that uh, basically what we did was we configured, we took the original API request that we just had in the browser and we can see that this works. So, so we want to do this in Composer and then we uh, parameterized all of it and configured it in this, this uh, data panel to make it into a data resource and to be able to send different barcodes through it easily.